In this video, we're going to look at what you need to do to back up your Ruby on Rails applications. Primarily, there's two things that you have to look at when backing up a Ruby on Rails application. One, and the main thing, is that your database needs to be backed up appropriately. And this we'll look at in a second on how you do that a little bit more in depth. The second thing is that the Ruby on Rails application, you should probably have that backed up regularly just in case something should happen to your server. The third thing we're going to look at is version control. This isn't exactly backup, but if you have your Ruby on Rails application under version control, you've essentially created a very sophisticated type of backup, and we'll look at an example of that. So for your database, most database engines have some built-in tools. Most of them are command line, but some of them, for example, such as Microsoft SQL Server, have built-in tools that are GUI in nature, like the Enterprise Manager, where you go in and you can schedule jobs and get your backup to run under a schedule. And I'll take a look here at a different tool. This is the Navicat that I've been using throughout these videos, and it utilizes the MySQL tools to build a backup. So if we go in here to do a backup, we click Backup, Start It, and there we go. We have a backup. You can actually build a schedule for a backup. So we can go in, go to Schedule, say New Batch Job, select Backup Movie Critic, save it, give it a name, Backup Batch, and you could actually do multiple jobs in here. We'll save it out. Now let's set up our schedule. And then you can schedule this to run whenever you want. Now on a laptop it really doesn't make any sense because this is on and off at different times. But in the case of a server this would be very important to do and it's very easy to set up. And the nice thing about Navicat is that it connects to any database server that's running MySQL. In this case we have a, a external server of Big John that has some backup scheduled on it. That's a production server so I won't exactly show you what's on it. Navicat also works with Postgres but there's other GUI tools available out there for backing up. Now specifically what you're backing up in your databases is you're generally taking your tables and putting them into some type of file structure to be saved. Now, that backup that I just did actually did it local, so it went from Navicat to local to my hard drive, and wherever you schedule it from is, is the machine that it's going to back up to. So if you back it up on the server, it's going to go onto the server. Now, that being said, say, for example, the backup on a Microsoft SQL server, if you back up that, it goes to a specific file location, which can be local, it can be on a SAN, it could be on another file server, an external hard drive, or it could be to tape. You could actually have a multi-layered system where you're backing up to your local hard drive into a different directory, then taking that and moving that into tape. Whatever strategy you use, make sure it's consistent, has no errors, so you're going to have to test your backup. It's the only way that you're going to be assured that your data is safe. So now the application directory backup. Your Ruby on Rails application is actually just a self-contained file structure with a root folder named whatever your application is. And it's actually a pretty simple matter of just copying that wherever you want to back it up. And if you had a cron job that just copied it somewhere or a backup program that physically backed up that file to a tape or another hard drive, that would be sufficient. So again, we're looking at the best possible thing to do is back up your application directory to an off-system or off-server system, such as tape, an external hard drive, a SAN, which is a storage area network, or another file server. That way your application is protected. Finally, version control. Version control is where you check your application structure, file structure, into a version control system at the beginning of your development process, at the very beginning. And as you develop, you check in your changes. Now I can show you an example here, and this will not be on the working files because it's not possible to do something like that. But here is a program that is in production use. I've showed it in other videos. It's a help desk program that where I work at we use. And it's got a number of files that get edited 
infrequently now, but in the beginning of the development, it was worked on a lot. And we kept this in version control. So if I go in, and we're using subversion for our version control, and I'll talk about the couple different version control systems in a second here. If I go into the log for subversion, you can actually see the changes that I've made there's just a few that's showing up here. Recently, you can see what I've done here. For example, the last change I did was moved authorized method to application.rb, and I can actually look at the files that changed. Another one, there was an accidentally entered a hidden character, removed it. So you can see who made the change, when the change was made, actually look at the files. The neat thing is you can roll back these changes if something should happen. It's not too difficult to use subversion or the other versioning control systems but it does take a little bit to get it set up. The other major player in version control or players I should say are CVS and Perforce. Now these two SVN and CVS are free, free open source. This is a pay system. So there you have it, what you should be thinking about with your backups.